Hey guys, in this video, I want to cover the prescription drug Concerta. Now this came from a viewer question. And so basically Concerta is a prescription medication used to treat ADHD, uh, ADD, whatever you want to call it. And it's part of a class, it's an extended release methylphenidate, which is similar to the prescription drug Ritalin, but with a few differences. So I want to use this video to talk about some of those differences, give you my overall thoughts, as well as side effects, those sorts of things. So let's hop right into it. Now I mentioned it's an extended release form of methylphenidate, but what makes Concerta slightly different is how it's released in the body. It's what I would call, or what a lot of doctors call, a backlogged uh, methylphenidate. And what that means is this, the methylphenidate tablet itself is kind of unique. It's an osmotic delivery system. So once it gets in your body, it releases in phases. And those phases are kicked in once it gets to your GI fluid, the fluid in your stomach and digestive tract. The osmotic difference causes drug to be released in phases. So the tablet itself, around 22% of it's released right away in the outer coating. And then we have this I guess phases in the tablet that are released as it travels through your system. The idea is rather than for it to be sustained in a steady release, it's actually designed to see levels go up slightly. And at the 10 hour mark, then it'll start dropping down. Okay, so kind of a cool delivery system and that's one of its biggest differences. Now, as far as what it's doing in your body, and this is the case with all the methylphenidates, not just to Concerta. It will block norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake in your synapses, in your neurons. So what we see is these levels of norepinephrine and dopamine go up, which tends to help people with the concentration effects. Um, and we do see a stimulation of the cerebral cortex, just like you do amphetamines. That's one of the common questions is, is this like speed amphetamine it's the effects to the brain are actually very similar okay um next thing we talked about the blood levels for 10 hours then they decrease a really common question is what about side effects and we do see side effects with concerta this is not just you know uh, a concerta only thing we see this with a lot of these medications in this class Number one, we do see a decrease in appetite. You're going to see a wide range for all these. That's because it depends on the dose. Concerta goes from 18 milligrams on up to 54 milligrams plus. Um, so decrease appetite, 2 to 26% of people, zero stoma or a dry mouth. You can see that in 3 to 14%. Nausea, 2 to 13%. Interesting one, we do see an increase in headaches. So that's important to know if you have migraines. And you can see an increase in migraine frequency with Concerta, but headaches 2 to 22%. A big one is insomnia. So we have people take this more in the morning, 2 to 33% of people. And then irritability, uh, 2 to 11%. And what we believe that comes back to when you increase norepinephrine, that's a stress related hormone. So some people can become irritable with it. One thing I want to point out. People will ask, well, what about using the generic form of Concerta? And Concerta is one of those medications where normally I would say, yeah, the generic's fine, no issues. There can be issues with the generics of Concerta. So I try to encourage people to stay with the branded generics. Or if you were established on one of the medications, one of the generics that were a non-branded uh, generic right off the bat, just stay with that. Um, but you want the generics that are more similar to the Concerta itself. If you have any questions on that, ask your pharmacist. They'll be able to steer you in the right direction. But this is one of those medications where generics can be a little more dicey. Okay. Now, three groups that I would be careful about using Concerta in. Again, this is not just Concerta. This is this entire class of medications. If you have something like bipolar disorder, a medication like Concerta can elicit or kick you into a manic phase. So we want to be careful there. 
cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attack, arrhythmia, those sorts of things you want to be careful. Again, this is the whole class of medications. And finally, seizure, we can see a lowering of the seizure thresh threshold, excuse me. So if you have seizure disorder, something to keep in mind, okay? And finally, there are abuse and dependence concerns. This again is not just Concerta, this is the entire class. Uh, so for example, if somebody, if you have a history of alcoholism, you would want to be very careful with this class because that abuse and dependency potential is there. Okay, so let me know in the comments, guys, have you taken Concerta? Was it helpful? Did you experience side effects? Anything and anything related to Concerta? Let me know in the comments. It's helpful for me to hear you, your particular feedback, and it's, it's helpful for other people that watch the video to hear your experience. So speaking of which, I hope this was helpful, guys. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.